Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin mazurkas. Today and this episode will be about three last mazurkas that Chopin composed uh, in his life. Last week I recorded a video about mazurka opus 63 number three so the last mazurka which was published during Chopin's life and and during the last three years um, of his life Chopin didn't really have um, nor time nor mood to compose he came back from Noan to Paris he broke up with Georges Sound and there was quite a lot of um, bad emotions around him he got very sick and was fighting with his sickness he was teaching a lot and as you know in Paris he didn't really have so much inspiration because he had so many things to do so um, unfortunately he didn't have time to compose a lot but what he did compose was three mazurkas which probably he planned to put in the next opus so he was working on a new opus of mazurkas and today I will just present for you this new opus of mazurkas which unfortunately was never published and also never finished. I have mixed feelings about this because in fact these are pieces uh, which Chopin didn't want the world to know. We know the fact that Chopin asked his friend when he was on his deathbed he asked his friend uh, to put into the fire all the music, all the scores that he had, the sketches and all the pieces he wrote before many years. Uh, he, he had them in the cupboard and then he just uh, asked him, put it into the fire when I die, because I don't want the world to know. <sighs> this friend said to Chopin, of course I will do it, but then he never did. And this is a problem because, uh, well, on one way I'm happy about it and we should be happy about it because we have so much beautiful music uh, which Chopin wanted to destroy. But on the other hand, I as a pianist, I can feel that these pieces are not finished and this is not really Chopin um, as a perfectionist, Chopin perfectionist who was always uh, thinking about every detail of his work in this piece we this is just these are just sketches so I think if we consider these mazurkas as sketches then I can record this video and I would like you to also think about them as a kind of sketches and ideas written down by Chopin which later was to be mastered but unfortunately he died so Today we focus on three mazurkas, mazurka in A minor, mazurka in G minor and mazurka in F minor and they were written in uh, 1847, 48 and 49. 49, so the year of death uh, of Chopin. Um, there is a big problem with the numeration and um, opus numbers. And this problem comes from the fact that uh, Chopin's student, Julian and friend, Julian Fontana, published in Paris and Berlin in July 1855 eight mazurkas which were in this cupboard, which were, which were to be destroyed, eight of them. But the problem is that he didn't put them in the order of the, in the in the chronological order. So we have opus 67 and 68, but it was published six years after Chopin's death. And some of these mazurkas are were written when Chopin was only 17, 18, or 19 years old, and they are put together with mazurkas published, at, sorry, composed at the end of his life. So it doesn't make sense. And uh, Jan Ecker and the new national edition has the chronological order and that's what I'm using actually. That's why I decided to make a video about these three mazurkas, which I personally feel they should be in one opus. But um, when it comes to the Fontana 
uh, opus numbers. We will hear Mazurka in A minor, which is opus 67 number 4, and then G minor, which is opus 67 number 2, and then F minor, which is sixth, opus 68 number 4. These are mazurkas I'm going to play for you. So let's listen to these mazurkas. Let me start again because my 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 finger slips down, so I have to do it again. in G minor.
So these are these three mazurkas. And, well, I have the feeling that they are not finished. Then generally Chopin was definitely in the process uh, of putting some ideas together and composing. And he, of course, he wrote many beautiful melodies. Also here we have many beautiful melodies. At the same time, we have this very typical Chopin's Jal. You know, this, the word Jal, which is uh, impossible to translate in English but it means something like a sorrow or missing something. For me, this music was written by a man who was... Mm, who had a very bad time in general, who was thinking about all his life, who was regretting many things, who, who had the feeling of uh, helplessness, the feeling of unrealized dreams and uh, the man who maybe before had a lot of um, power, optimism, faith, but he lost it all. And especially in the last mazurka. Poland was still um, not free country. Poland was still not independent. So that was impossible for Chopin. I mean, to 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 deal with. He it was one of his biggest dreams to have Poland free. He broke up with George Sam, and in fact, he knew that in his life he will never ever have successful and happy family. He's another dream. He never had kids and uh, wife and home. His health was worse and worse. And so this is the, the picture of the man who co is composing this music. But let's <coughs> let's analyze this mazurkas one one after another. And I will try to talk a little bit also about, well, I will make a kind of short analysis and then at the same time I will just tell you a, a, bit, a little bit of some my ideas of the interpretation. Um, so the first mazurka has a very sad melody. This sadness comes from the fact that Chopin is using the chromatic chromatic uh, intervals this is the first melody it's very polish it sounds like a polish folk slow kujawiak melody um, melody starts from up and goes down we have two options of doing the dynamic first option is a very natural option when while we are going down we are making a diminuendo and second one is which i actually prefer is to to do the crescendo at the end and to make a very important statement at the very end of this phrase just listen Repeated, but we don't have this suffering anymore. Instead, we have the melody, like a like a scale. And then the variation of the ending of the phrase, which I also prefer to play a little bit louder. Um, also. Mm, when it comes to the rubato now, here the, we had a phrase is very simple. It's like Chopin is trying to um, to help us how to play it. We have a long note and then many short notes, long note and then many short notes. So it's a little bit like we are um, we are like throwing something up. So we need more time when it goes up and then less time when it goes down. So we can uh, make a little bit longer at the beginning. I mean the, the long note 
longer and then go go faster with short long and fast long then it's it it sounds like you know the tree on the wind when it's uh phrase in the second dolce we have a very interesting thing like a dialogue a little bit a dual dialogue yes dualism two different characters because at first we have something a little bit like a wedek uh, like a dance ver dance like uh, of course maybe we cannot play it like this so happy but uh, there is dancing and then we have the lyric, lyric singing, very beautiful. And again, it's like one phrase is saying let's dance, and another is saying oh I'm, I'm I want to just uh, celebrate uh, my state. I I'm not I don't feel like dancing. chromatic scale going down so suffering but it is very interesting moment because this scale going down you know chromatic is every single key in the in the keyboard going down um, but here it is interrupted by one note and i mean a few notes which together makes a melody but they interrupt this scale just listen so if if i underline this melody then it sounds like a melody I don't think I can play like this because it's not written in the score but at the same time it was not published during Chopin's life so we don't really know uh, if he wanted it or not so maybe if I like I can and then the major so for a little bit we are smiling and again we have long and short long and short long and and then the same melody but in minor so like suffering again and now the here the melody the symbol of death actually this is the death of melody the melody goes up with the diminuendo and ends dying so the silence it just isn't death so we start <laughs> And then just the statement at the end and that's that's how i i that's how i feel this mazurka mazurka number two is a little bit different because it has more mm, well it seems like chopin is in a better mood i would say it's in minor but the first the first motif is immediately repeated in the major so here 
I think the pianist needs to um, improve his touch and needs to use a lot of many different way ways of touching the keyboard. So like... Uh, and now... More happy touch, you know, this is the sad touch. And now happy. And again sad. simple I think we have one motif repeated in the mind major again the same motif repeated and again from the beginning and now the end of the phrase which is the scale going down but it's not a chromatic scale not chromatic, it's a normal scale, so there is not so much suffering. And then what we have later we have like a muzzle, but again, like before, we have a dialogue, we have a dancing part and then a lyric part. So it's like Chopin on 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 one hand he wants to dance, he feels like dance, but on the other hand he doesn't have power or he doesn't have mood or he just think Poland is so far and we don't really know. But just listen, mommy. And then... Here is something is... Um, again, we have chromatic scale going down, so again suffering. when it's repeated but after that we have a very strange phrase the right hand stays alone there is no left hand nothing just pure melody again again chromatic well this well I have two there is two there are two options uh, one option is that Chopin um, uh, how to say he wrote right hand as an idea then he left it because he didn't really know he, he thought maybe oh I will write left hand later and then he never did because he died but another option is uh, deeper which I actually prefer is that here we have the symbol of being alone it's a very literally actually symbol only one note it's like in Polish countryside there is a person who is sitting in front of her house and singing very sad melody this has to be played very freely as a folk melody and then and then again we come back to beginning the last mazurka which is also the last piece 
composed by Chopin in the year of his death. As we know, he died in October, and the, before that he was writing this piece. It's only it's left in the sketches. Um, there are many versions in, in national edition. Jan Ecker wrote some more music based on sketches, but the problem is uh, I don't trust this because he writes that well he decided to compose, uh, but some parts he he thought Chopin didn't want, so it seems like he didn't want, so he didn't use, but instead he used something else, blah blah blah, and I don't know, so I don't trust it. Because how can he know that Chopin didn't want it if Chopin never crossed it, right? We cannot say. So what we can play is actually what what is in the sketches as a as the mu as a music uh, written, not not just some ideas. But what we hear in this music is so terribly sad. It's like weeping. It's like a weeping soul. And. I don't even think I can try to an analyze it a little bit, but what what I actually prefer to do is just to play it and let you feel what this music tells you. Just one very interesting thing. If we compare the mazurka in A minor which I played for you today as number one. Long and one, two, three, four, five, six and six short. And now listen to this mazurka. Long. Long. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Is exactly the same motif and now what I think is that um, Chopin was was collecting ideas and he had two different ideas of these two melodies and then we have one mazurka with the same melody and another mazurka with this melody which is much more chromaticized cr 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 chromatic maybe he later if he had lived longer of course he wanted to put them together and make one masterpiece out of those two. Who knows? But here we have a deep sadness. Second time the same. No major, only minor. What else is very interesting in this moment is that the accompaniment of the left hand, something is missing. Can you say what is missing? Let's listen in the left hand. Yes, there is no one. There should be one. One is a bass. Is when we have one in music, we feel safe. When we don't have one, we are we don't know where we are. We we don't feel safe. We feel lost. So that's the symbol of being lost. Exactly, that's how it is. the trying to write an obelic. Listen. If I play it all the time. There 
always said no Berek, but it's the Oberek also get lost. Just listen one second. And get lost. And now the second part in the major, but only for a little bit. And now it brings us to of drama. And now dialogue. But this melody, for me, this music is from another world. It's the music from the world after death. And at the beginning, it's like whipping. That's the end. Well, the piece is unfinished and we can only guess. And it's quite romantic to think, oh, what if, what if he finished this? Uh, always, this piece always touches me. Even it always makes me very sad. And also thinking about Paul Chopin, who died being only 39. How much more beautiful music could he? compose if he had lived longer. Thank you very much for watching and if you watch my other videos thank you also um, for all your words and enthusiasm. I got a lot of very enthusiastic messages both in Polish and English about this series um, and it made me keep made me keep going because it not easy actually to do such a huge project I would say this is the end but it's not really the end because there are still some mazurkas missing mazurkas that was published after Chopin's death but that was not composed at the end of his life but some time during his life and probably I will also prepare the video about them so see you again soon and bye bye